Loving this suit. Well, you look totally rad in it. How's it, internet? Ozark here. I hope you enjoyed that little one minute trailer I made of the brand new Wolfenstein Youngblood. I'm really digging it so far, and as you can imagine, the internet is obviously agreeing with me. No, <laughs> it's an actual war zone out there. Expected Wolfenstein got Nazi Borderlands instead. Annoying AI co op sustain single player makes this game not very Wolfenstein y. First game of 300 that I've refunded. The AI is terrible, enemies are bullet sponges, and the story is incredibly boring. Okay, so clearly the internet is very upset, but what's new, right? So let's get into this Wolfenstein Youngblood review and see why that is. Obvious warning, this is a review, so there will be some gameplay spoilers ahead. All Nazis were killed using the Corsair K95 Platinum RGB Mechanical Keyboard and M65 Elite Mouse. The K95 is made from high-grade mech armor, anodized brush aluminum, and comes in black or grey. It features 1.2mm accuation MX Cherry speed switches that guarantee ultra-fast and accurate anti-ghosting input. Dedicated, hot-swappable first-person key setups are specifically designed with custom wraith inclines and extra grip for high-intensity performance while under fire. The M65 Elite also features a premium-grade metal frame with an adjustable weight system and dynamic two-zone RGB lighting. The native 1800 DPI is adjustable in 1 DPI resolution increments, giving you total sensitivity, customization and ultra accurate tracking coupled with a precision sniper button for headshot optimization. See the purchase links below and ready your battle stations. The game is different from the previous Colossus, New Order and Old Blood Wolfenstein releases in that yes there is a co-op mode, yes there are coins and gold currencies and yes the AI are a bit dumb with tons of HP and armor all of which we'll get into more detail in just a bit. But what really makes this game different is that it doesn't follow a single linear path. Instead, after the first two stages or missions, whichever you'd like to call them, you reach your main base hub of the game, appropriately called the Catacombs, as there's literally an underground catacomb with skulls for walls. Now, we'll take a tour of the base shortly, as it's actually a very well designed and detailed area, with lots of cool stuff and easter eggs. Once here, you will receive your first side missions of the game from the characters of the Resistance. To do these missions, you take the Metro Underway Subway system, which is the map on the wall, to travel between the areas of the game. This means that you can choose which mission you'd like to complete, in which order you'd like. The areas you travel to are more like small, independent zones or stages, rather than the large, continuous linear system from the previous games, which I think has most people upset, although I'm not too angry about it and I'll tell you why shortly. You will have to clear most of the zone in order to get your mission objectives done and return to the catacomb base, either by running back to the metro checkpoint or by long pressing the E button. Once back at the base, you will be given follow up missions, although in some cases your girlfriend Abby, the one with the dirty round glasses, will give you follow up missions while in the zone. The zones themselves are loaded with enemies and fast paced action, although the enemy AI is a bit lackluster or dumb to be honest as they don't really offer much in terms of tactics other than running either at you or behind cover of some sort before blasting you with rockets, flamethrowers and lasers. While the enemy AI isn't the greatest ever made, I didn't find it that bad really as the amount of enemies thrown at you really keeps you on your toes and the boss fights are also quite challenging. The difficulty really ramps up a few hours into the game with a variety of flying drones, wall mounted machine guns, mech dogs, Super Soldata and even kamikaze pooches strapped with C4. Fuck! That dog needs to die, man! All trying to kill you at the same time from all angles. <laughs> oh, 
My biggest gripe though is that enemies tend to respawn after a certain time period if you come back to an area you've already cleared. This I found a bit odd and really caught me off guard the first time this happened when I was being shot upon in an area I was 100% sure I left nothing alive to tell the story. But once you know this is going to happen, you kind of get used to it. The other larger issue that most people are complaining about when they say this isn't like other Wolfenstein games is that if you leave a zone, go back to the catacombs and then come back to the zone, the entire zone's enemies will be respawned. Albeit in a random configuration, they are still respawning, which means that you need to re-clear them from the start all over again. There is however one very good reason for this, and that is to reuse the 3D assets as much as they could. As an ex-3D artist and quasi-game developer, I can understand why, as a lot of work goes into making any game design. And yes, before you say it, Bethesda is definitely not a small indie studio, but the quality level of the modeling, lighting and rendering of each stage is definitely AAA quality. So a lot of work still goes into it regardless of how big your studio is. Artists and programmers spend months of their lives, even years, creating the beautiful worlds we get to interact with, no matter what studio they work at. And sure, this might sound like a shortcut from Bethesda, which brings me to my other reason for not really being too upset about this, which is the price. This AAA game is only $30, which is half the price of many other AAA titles. In order for them to achieve this price, shortcuts need to be taken in order for the game to be profitable. This is just the business side of things and how it works. By doing this, Bethesda are able to offer a large amount of gameplay hours with beautifully created and detailed environments all at the same time while offering a very reasonable price point. I'd much rather have them do it this way than give me mediocre environments that were designed not to be reused. And yes, maybe I just have a higher appreciation for these small details coming from my background and experience, knowing what goes into making them than most other gamers do. Either way, if they are 60 bucks for the game, I would be more upset about it. But they didn't, so hey, it is what it is. I'm not angry, I just set out to enjoy the game, which I definitely am. There are actually two other reasons when you might need to clear the zone again, besides for actually leaving the zone. The first is when both you and your sister die at the same time or run out of shared lives, which can easily be solved by me telling you to not suck and die. The other is when the game unfortunately crashes with a error right crash dump message causing you to start the zone all over again. This happened to me quite a few times during my first two hours of playtime. As I was recording using the GeForce Experience software, I thought it was either that or the game itself. Either way, all I had to do was update my graphics card's drivers to the latest 431.60 and all was fixed. No more crashes, no more issues. So all in all, a very smooth release compared to some other games in the past. Let's move on to a more confusing part of the game, which is right at the start at the creation menu. When you load up your first game, you might be confused as to why you're being shown a multiplayer menu and not a single player one. Here, I think the devs could have done a slightly better job at directing you as to which option is the best for your first game. Although, I guess I can blame myself too for not taking the proper time to read all the options first. Anyway, when playing your first game, you'll be asked to choose one of the sisters and get given a few customization options, such as the bodysuit, the helmet, the initial weapons and pep signs. Once done, you press start and wait for the story to begin. Except it doesn't. Not knowing which to choose, I selected quick match, which unfortunately threw me into someone else's game and places you wherever they are on the storyline, skipping all story missions and cutscenes in the process. Now, you can understand how this was very confusing for me, as my very first game was on some random platform stage with Jess, another level 3 player, crying at me for help on the other side of some random door that she was dying behind and me having no idea how to get to her and even worse, why I was already in some serious battle right at the start of a game. My second attempt also threw me into someone else's game, in the heat of battle yet again on a totally different stage and me dying even quicker due to me being level 1 when this was actually a level 4 area. The host of the game booted me, which I definitely don't blame him for, 
but I was left more confused than ever as to what was going on and if I actually just bought a multiplayer shooter game when the marketing told me this was a single player game. Fortunately I didn't and I was just choosing the wrong mode. To avoid all of this, choose to rather host your own game and not join someone else's game which is what Quick Match actually does. This will start you off from the beginning of the storyline, complete with cutscenes and all. If you don't want others randomly joining your game, like I did to these other guys games, you can actually turn that feature off when creating the game by selecting either offline or friends only mode. Easy and simple, but they could have made it more clear from the start. Then you'll be set to play the game as a single player or have friends join you as you wish. So a bit of an oversight from the devs as I said, but not a big deal once you know how it works. It's easy and simple, although they could have made it more clear from the start. Once done, the fun starts, and after the initial cutscene of the two girls with their dad, the legendary badass, Mr. BJ Blazkowicz himself, as he shows how much faster he is than a pouncing viper. Holy shit! Holy shit! Situational awareness. It'll save your life. From here, the cutscene simply ends as BJ forecasts rain. Gotta get out of the rain. And we get given zero idea as to what happened to him. We then get forwarded into the future with yet another cutscene of the two girls in the catacombs with the rebels. They get given a mission to kill the General Winkler who is on a zeppelin. This general is located in a zeppelin called the Nachtfalter. Kill him first. Then we may proceed with finding your father. Here, there is one last hilarious cinematic of the two girls getting a taste of their very first Nazi kill as Soph blows his head off with a shotgun, followed by her vomiting and Jess gagging from the brain particles in her mouth. Oh my god, I got his brains in my mouth! Soph's goofy laugh reminds me of something right out of Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventures! and cracks me up every time. From here, the first actual gameplay begins as you get reminded one more time just how hardcore your dad is as Abby gives you one last vote of confidence reminding you that your dad is The man who killed Adolf fucking Hitler The Zeppelin itself is kind of a semi-tutorial stage with laptop computers spread throughout the area doing a very good job of giving you tips on how the gameplay works and what moves the two sisters can do together Wolfenstein Youngblood allows you to be stealthy with a sneak attack while crouched or while cloaked using the bodysuit in both cases using the melee weapon the knife or the hatchet that you chose during the character creation. If sneaking around isn't your thing, you are more than able to blast your way through the stage shooting everything that moves with the initial three guns you get given. You actually start with two but you pick up a third right after the first few kills. I found the AI sister did a respectable job in assisting during fights and managed to kill a whole lot of enemies for me. I really didn't find it to be an annoyance or a hindrance during my gameplay experience as some people accuse her of being in the reviews. At the end of the Zeppelin stage, you are faced with a boss fight against none other than General Winkler in a crazy modded bodysuit. That can also cloak. At the end of the battle, you blast his modded ass off the Zeppelin wing and into the jet engines. A very challenging fight and I quite enjoyed it. You are then met with another cinematic based one week earlier to the event you just played through, fitting in between your dad's disappearance and how you obtained the bodysuits, as the FBI visit your house and have a little chat to your mom on his whereabouts. The FBI lady is actually Abby's mom, who the girls listen in on during a conversation with their mom. While doing this, they pick up a strange radio frequency coming from the attic above the girls' room. This ends up being their dad's secret lair. Who would have thought? Here they find some info that their dad might be in the catacombs in Paris. Abby decides to help out as she hijacks the FBI's futuristic helicopter that conveniently holds two new high-tech bodysuits, a perfect fit for the two sisters. You are then taken back to the current time as the two sisters pull themselves from the water and the wreckage of the sinking zeppelin. Here another outdoor stage awaits you with the end goal of finding the catacombs and the rebels. This stage continues to teach you more advanced gameplay techniques via computer terminals scattered throughout the environment. The co-op gameplay is enhanced by both characters needing to perform a task such as pressing a button, flipping a switch, pulling a lever, activating key codes or even turning launch keys simultaneously for you to proceed further. This is naturally designed to increase the co-op experience but the AI sister also did a great and responsive job of doing her part when required. A nice touch in terms of the HP and live system is that both you and your sister actually share lives up to a maximum of three instead of each of you having your own lives. With this, you are able to mend each other if one is hurt by shocking their bum. 
but you will lose a shared life if you don't get there on time. Here again, the AI did a great job of healing me when I was down. As mentioned before, I found the interaction between the two sisters hilarious. They talk about stuff only two teenage girls would. Did Mama ever have the talk with you, so? Oh yeah, that was a trip to cringe city. Those guys are so clueless sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> While annoying and playing with each other as siblings do. At the same time, they give each other strong words of encouragement during the heat of battle. Fuck yeah, Jess, you're slaying it! And agree that size does actually matter. Yikes. Now that's a big <laughs> you will, by this point, have noticed and collected quite a few coins, which is one of the biggest reasons for an uproar on the Steam reviews, with the misconception that this game is microtransaction based and a pay to win model, which it really is not. The coins are an in game currency to upgrade your weapons, but they are plentiful during gameplay. Bethesda did however shoot themselves in the foot by offering the gold bars as a purchase option via the Steam storefront, which flung the masses into total rage mode. The gold bars are required together with the coins in order to purchase alternative skins for the character suits and helmet designs and don't influence the gameplay at all. The coins are in abundance so you will get plenty of weapon upgrades which are categorized under five sections being receiver, sight, magazine, barrel and grip. You are able to unlock multiple options, but you need to choose and enable one per category per gun. As I mentioned, the skins require coins found in game and gold bars via real money. They are, however, obtainable by just playing the game. I actually found two suit skins after about two to three hours of playtime, being the airborne and army versions, as well as a few weapon skins. I'm not sure if this is an RNG based system or if they are found in specific locations, Either way, I'm sure I'll find many more before finishing the game. I actually really like the airborne one as it makes me look like Bumblebee's pilot, if he were a controllable mech. While it may seem that you have too many coins during the first part of the game and that you're unlocking all the upgrades too quickly, just relax and play the game further. You pick up more badass weapons to face melt Nazis and for you to upgrade and spend your coins on once you enter the Brother 1, 2 and 3 raid areas. In fact, you can pick up many more guns in the game, up to 11. These include the Diesel Kraftwerk, the Elektro Kraftwerk, the Laser Kraftwerk, the Kugelhammer, the Diesel Homer, and the Uber Hammer. Each of these new guns has a new set of upgrades, plus, once you kill a certain mech around the third brother area, you unlock your tier 2 upgrades for all weapons, adding another 55 upgrades to collect. Pep signs also require a lot of gold to upgrade, so at no point will you run into a situation where you have nothing to spend your gold on. I assure you this as someone who has actually finished the game and not just played it for 2 hours. After killing the last boss I actually only had about a 48% completion rate and was nowhere near getting all the tier 2 upgrades for my weapons. In fact, I only managed to completely upgrade about 2 of them. After the final boss there are more follow up quests as well as a host of side and daily quests and increased difficulty levels to get more coins and upgrades. While chatting about weapon upgrades, let me quickly address the claims that the enemies are nothing more than bullet sponges. This is once again true if you reviewed the game after only playing for 2 hours. Should you put more time into it, you will notice how much stronger each upgrade makes you as you start to vaporize enemies towards the end. I actually really loved this as going back to the beginning stages, I can now see how weak I was compared to the pure power I exhibit later on and why the enemies felt so bullet spongy. A great sense of character growth and epicness. It really made me want to redo those beginning stages again, which you easily can, just to see how much stronger I'd become. Even though the enemies scale level wise, you scaled much more and thanks to your 2% damage boost per level, weapons and character upgrades, you are now in ultimate beast mode. All in all, a fantastic balance of growth, gameplay hours and replayability. You are able to jointly level up your characters with level up points, which you gain every time that you, well, level up. These character upgrades also fall under three main categories, being mind, muscle and power. Each of these has a small tech tree of four subcategories to choose and upgrade elements such as health, armor, dual wielding, sidestepping, dashing, increased pickups, resurrection bonuses and more. Pep signs can also be unlocked under the character upgrade tab, but are bought using coins and not gold or level up points. Each of these pep signs gives a different bonus to your sister during gameplay. You start the game off with either a health or armor bonus, which is on a small cooldown 
and can be activated using the T key. I have found they come in very handy especially during heavy battles and can make the difference between survival and death so make sure to use them as much as you can. Some recommendations would be to get the bigger guns upgrade when you can so that you can use the big guns dropped by the super soldata. From here work towards extreme gun pocket so that you can keep them in your inventory and not be forced to drop them. This will more importantly allow you to customize and upgrade them. This plus the HP boosts will really help you against the last boss where the ammo is in low supply. I would also get the secret collector upgrade as this makes finding all collectibles much easier and fun as they are now displayed on your mini map. Speaking of collectibles, the devs have put so many cool items into this game. The old school 3D glasses unlock 3D model game assets used in the game, which as you know I am a big fan of, as it really shows how detailed everything is in this game, yet it runs at such a remarkable high frame rate. The floppy drives unlock key codes to doors, as well as specific red crates, which can unlock concept art, just one more reason to get the collector's upgrade for your character. The transcripts of Sebastian always using the password code 1234 is hilarious. There are also audio tracks of German music as well as transcripts, which I haven't had the time to read, but I'm sure they are also very well written. Jumping back to an earlier part of the game after the second level, you will end up at the catacombs, which is basically your central home base hub from where you can jump to other zones in the game. Here you will receive missions for the main story as well as extra side missions. After you have finished a few of them, you will unlock Abby's to-do list which will give you your daily, weekly and replay missions to complete for extra XP and coins. The replay missions are missions that you have obviously already completed but can be redone on the same difficulty level or harder for more rewards and a good challenge. The Catacombs hub is one awesome place and I spent a good while leisurely walking through all the rooms checking out all the details that the devs put in here. This place is a treasure trove of 80s German vibes, complete with a bar with tropical bamboo theme, a dirty kitchen, ammo manufacturing room, android repair station and even a disco room with music album covers all surrounded by creepy skulls. It's also filled with some easter eggs and by far the best one are the two arcade machines next to the bar where you can actually play the original DOS Wolfenstein 3D game from the 80s. How cool is that? You can actually buy this on Steam for $5 but now you get it for free. While not in the catacombs another easter egg I found was the mention of the recently released Wolfenstein Cyber Pilot game. Okay, so in terms of story, this review has already showed a lot of spoilers, so I won't ruin the most important ones and definitely not the end for you. All I can say is the story gets really interesting with some gruesome cinematics and you should definitely play and finish the game to experience it all. One thing that I will mention is that at the end, Abby mentions that it's going to rain, which is a nice tie in with the first cinematic where BJ says the same thing, and more importantly, it sets up the story for Wolfenstein 3 very well. Rain is coming, girls. I've already said a lot about the graphics, so I'll keep this part short. As with the previous Wolfenstein and Doom titles, this game runs gloriously in 4K on ultra settings at 70 frames a second with nothing more than a GTX 1070 Ti, thanks to the amazing Vulcan architecture and the well optimized models, textures, and lighting, which are all top quality. I can't wait to see how it looks once ray tracing gets added to it at a later date. Audio is also top notch and with some high quality headphones or speakers, the music and sound effects are fantastic, immersing you right in the heart of battle as shots get fired. In terms of game length, I played about 3-4 to four hours and my save slot said I was at about 20% completion rate, while after 12-15 to 15 hours I defeated the final boss. This is certainly not the end of the game as there are many other things to do beyond this as I've explained during this review. While people might be upset about the non-linear gameplay we are used to getting from the other Wolfenstein series, Wolfenstein Youngblood's zone design really isn't that bad. It allows for a lot of replayability and the option to choose which stages you'd like to do again at harder difficulty levels or with a friend. The story also nestles its way in there very well. The dailies and weeklies are just a little extra incentive and are by no means a requirement and you certainly don't need the gold bars. The weapons are stunning and each being very unique and serving a purpose. I found myself using all of them through my playtime, which is a rare thing amongst other games as I generally find myself using two guns that I like and only use them. The visual upgrades of each gun can clearly be seen in game, which is amazing. 
Either way, this game is only 30 bucks, and for that price, I really think you get your money's worth, and I have no regrets. I have really enjoyed it, and I still want to wrap things up, completing all the side missions. All in all, this was actually designed to be more of a Wolfenstein 2.5, as it finds itself between the previous Colossus and the forthcoming Wolfenstein 3. The price is an indication to that and lends to the fact, although by no means does it lack the quality and gameplay experience of the previous titles. Maybe you'll finish the game and never touch it again, maybe you'll play it online and try to complete the stages again. That's up to you, but the hours of gameplay you receive are alone worth the $30 price tag, let alone the quality. Wolfenstein Youngblood in my opinion is a great game and I give it a 9 out of 10. Well that's it from me guys, like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this Wolfenstein Youngblood review and if you didn't, simply hit that like button twice for best performance. Until next time, this is Ozark saying, lacquer gaming, peace out.